This is Tales of Swordfall. Episode 25, Dreams and Dusk. So, you all head out of town for about ten minutes. Um, you know, the two on actual animals are going, you know, a little bit faster than you, Ash. Uh, it's a little hard to keep up. But, you know, it's it's manageable, especially when the horses have to, like, just... Well, the pony and the mule, they just kind of stop and eat as you catch up. So, you know, I... How well can you guys keep track of time? Uh, mm -hmm. roll me, roll me 2d10, someone, anyone, everyone. I got that. You know, your 10 minutes is more like 17 to 20 minutes, you know, not bad. And, uh, you guys find a small clearing off the side of the road. And, uh, it's, it's nice. For a clearing, I mean, uh, this whole area that you're in, it's very much halfling country, just rolling hills everywhere. There's little groves here and there. Um, you know, the grass is starting to look a little dead because it's winter time, but you know, it's still very beautiful around here. Um, and since you guys are approaching uh, later and later in the day, the sun is starting to set because winter time. Long shadows. Uh, and when you have rolling hills and some mountains, it gets so much darker, so much quicker. And, uh, like, still, you can see the ever present sword floating over the city of Swordfall, uh, miles and miles away. Yeah, probably a nice uh, glare of the sun, sort of making it glow. <laughs> It's quite a sight. Yeah, it always is. Uh, yeah, you guys are like a good 20 miles away, but that sword is monumental. So, like, uh, what do you do to rest? Like, first, are you guys taking a normal short rest? Yeah. yeah. I would say. Okay. And... As we know, with normal short rests, you guys can use any amount of your hit die. Um, just remember, if you haven't replenished them yet, that's all you have for right now. And I know there's been at least one short rest in between uh, for Nurik and Rayan. Yep. So, mm -hmm. you guys have some dice missing from your dice bloom that you haven't replenished yet. Uh, okay. So, go, 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 go. Call, call. Uh, go ahead and roll what you need. Yeah, I think. Uh, Oof. Up. Rolling a one on hit die. Oh yeah, I can re-roll uh, fails because of my luck. Forgot about that. Oh, does that include about hit, hit die? Hit die so. uh, I don't know actually. That's a good question. Because hit dies aren't really saving throws or skill checks. Uh, when I roll one, an attack, ability check, or saving throw. Yeah, hit die or okay. none of those. None of that. Okay. So I got what I got. Okay. Yeah. So uh, roughly, um, another how many? Thing, so. I've got... I'm doing much better. Okay, so I have a total <laughs> of five. It. It's been a while since I've done this. Yep. Uh, so... Let me look at your character sheet. <clears throat> Let's... It was originally at three. I don't think I changed it since last time or something. Yeah, uh, so you should have had three left. Uh, okay. So, basically, uh, you had five, you used it twice to basically fully heal yourself the last time, if I remember correctly. It's been like two yeah. weeks. And so you yeah. can just uh, use three more, and uh, yeah, you'll be more. out of your pool. Okay, so I got 14 more. 
Yep, yeah, 14. So the next time you take a long rest, whenever that will be in the future, uh, <laughs> half of half rounded down of your hit dice will replenish. So the next time you take a rest, you'll get two hit dice. All right, that'll work. Perfect. Yep. And here's a quick question for you. Um, does short rest offer any uh, key regeneration? For monks? Uh, I don't believe for monks it does. Let me double check. In the player's handbook, uh, I know that, oh my gosh, all my windows just... And as for spell slots, I didn't think about that either. Um, yeah, it should be stated within the player's handbook underneath something. Uh, let's see, for key... Come on, scroll there. Work for me. I got my arcane recovery, which is a nice little wizard perk. Yep, and that's a short rest for you, isn't it? Uh-huh. And I got my fighter abilities back. Yeah, short rests do a lot for fighters. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you must spend at least 30 minutes of the rest meditating. Right, of what rest? What? Uh, a short or long rest. So yes, if you spend at least a half hour meditating, uh, you mm -hmm. get your key points back. So... Uh, for sorcerers, let's look that one up. Unfortunately for sorcerers, it's after a long rest. Dang it! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, the only downside of being a sorcerer. But, you know, if you do have a few left, you can always, you know, use your sorcery points to make more slots for yourself. Yeah. That's that's always an option, especially if, uh, you know, you need to cast something and you don't have any more of that spell slot. Mm-hmm. And I only have um, one spell well, spell slot um, at the moment, so. Yep. And uh, <laughs> also, you have that perk where, if you spill blood on that uh, elder focus, you can uh, cast something one level higher than you're performing it at. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's kind safe. of messed up. It just my fail safe. Um, very like Lovecraftian. <laughs> yep, I like it. I figured it'd be a good trade-off. Kind of messed up, but a good trade-off. Yeah. So basically, um, mechanic-wise, it's like what one d four damage that you'll you'll take if you do that option. So, boy. Uh, anyways, enough about Rayanne's secrets. <laughs> um, yeah. So you guys find a nice clearing on the side of the road. Um, so how long are you intending to take your rest for? I think short rests can take up to six hours. I think it says at least one hour. Yeah, it needs to be at least one hour, and then it's like up to six before it starts starting into a long rest. Right. Uh, I mean, I figured an hour would be sufficient to kind of recuperate. And <clears throat> get some energy. Yeah, Narc, Narc's kind of using the time to eat up and maybe dab at some of his wounds meditate a little <laughs> no he, he, he just spent the time resting he didn't he just spent a full hour resting <laughs> okay cool i'm just Ryan just just crashes <laughs> takes an hour <laughs> nap yeah i can see that um i imagine the moment she hits the ground she's just like ow she's done cool and, uh, Rand, give me a wisdom saving throw. Ooh. Okay. Let's 
14. Okay. Right. As soon as your head hits the ground, you're standing back up. Right. Still in that grove, but Nork and Ash are completely gone. Okay, so Rayan just goes to kind of explore. And every time you leave the grove, you somehow enter back into it from the opposite side you come in. Hmm. Can I do like a perception check just to kind of look around? Sure. Okay. So it's a lot brighter than it has been. Like, it, it seems like you've gone back a couple hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's uh, spring flowers all around, which seems kind of weird for it being winter. And you can hear a soft melody in the air. Do I recognize this melody? With your head yeah. attached? Mm, kinda. Hmm. And uh, there is the smell of apple, apples somewhere you start noticing. Okay. I want to try to figure out where that smell's coming from. So, so, do you just follow your nose? I guess so. So, you start following your nose to mm -hmm. the fruity smells. And you find yourself in an apple orchard. All the apple trees are full of beautiful flowers. The petals are falling down. And in the distance, you can see a very familiar throne made out of spring plants and a familiar figure. Like a very matronly figure. Oh, okay. So, Rayan slowly and cautiously walks towards the figure. It's it's totally Sasa. Yes. You you recognize the mother goddess of love. Mm. And how close do you get to her? Uh, uh, within a cautious distance, I would say halfway towards her throne. Okay. And, uh, she doesn't seem to notice you. Like, the last time you were here with Gavin, she, like, noticed you instantly. Okay, so she just comes up closer. She's like, um, hello? And the closer you get, like, the more you just notice she's just... She's... Well, as living and breathing as a goddess can get. But, um, you find your footing suddenly on nothing, and you start just falling. Yeah. And uh. you hear the laughter of Mr. Tangle. Okay, I want to see how Rayan's composing after just having fallen and now is just in a pit of laughter and I assume darkness or whatever. Yeah, uh, Rayan can wake up at this point too, if you want her to. I'm kind of curious. What does he have to say at this point? <laughs> uh, so you are laughing. Oh, well, not you are laughing. Uh, you hear the laughter of Mr. Tangle as you're falling down into this dark, misty pit. Uh, you land on 
a net that seems to be holding you up. And you land on it face down, and through the holes in the net, you can see towns burning. Rand's just horrified by the sight. She can she recognize some of the towns that are burning by any chance? Or uh, give me a survival. Let's let's just see how well. Fourteen. Yeah, it's uh you know some of the smaller towns by Delson by the uh, border of the Elf Kingdoms and uh yeah uh your your focus kind of becomes super focused on one figure who's stepping out of uh the ashes and the fire and it's an older woman she looks very strong um she looks like a magic user she looks a little crazy and her gaze just comes up to you do i recognize this one this woman or is it just someone that ran has never met whatsoever or you have a strong feeling that you've met her, but you don't recognize her. And then she utters the word daughter, and you wake up. Uh, that's it. No more dreaming. <laughs> so how do you wake up from this? She just wakes up just all of a sudden. Dah! I don't know if it wakes up anyone else, but she just <laughs> gets up with a loud scream, like, ah! Oh, yeah, Norik was, was uh, kind of laying there with his eyes closed for a bit, and uh, it startled him. <laughs> oh, were you taking a nap, too? Uh, you know, actually, how about the... How about we, we, we roll something to figure out if he was just laying with his eyes closed or if he fell asleep? Oh, wisdom saving third place. Ooh. I had advantage on my bad. Anyway, but, but, yeah, that's the six. Yeah, I mean, was it your intention to actually like start actually deep sleeping? But Norik did. Right. <laughs> so you go yeah. into oh, that's way too reminiscent of my real life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just took, I was just taking a nap. And then I'm like, take a nap eight hours later. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So Mark, uh, he apparently went out cold. Yeah. I mean, first you're having like a normal like dream. You know, you're a child again, and your mom's like calling you for dinner. And no matter how much you run toward your old house, you just seem to never ever get there. And then her. Berta pops up. Roberta. Hello. Oh. I can talk again. Yeah, I I can talk. Just not as regularly as you'd like to. Hmm. It's 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 nice uh to be able to talk to someone as as we were but that wasn't good for you it wasn't good for either of us uh, yeah yeah I, I realize that now uh, so that letter <laughs> Right. What have you decided what to do? There are consequences to the whole thing. Yeah, it really comes down to I mean, you 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 know all about the letter, I I presume. 
yeah, he was talking, he was dictating it in front of me. It's kind of <laughs> like listening to someone uh, giving out execution orders and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Well, I think it comes down to... Um... I trust you more than I trust him. Well, he is one of the powerful elf lords that can stand out, uh, Swordfall. So does power equal trust? I don't think so. No, usually it's quite the opposite. It's like trusting dragons. I can't say I've ever trusted a dragon. I don't know if I've ever... Well, I, I know one dragon. And that was not... Never mind. Thank you for listening to Tales of Swordfall. Please consider listening to these podcasts. Hello folks, JP Winterbottom here to tell you about The Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons narrative-focused actual play podcast about a group of private investigators in a fantasy noir setting with eldritch horror undertones. You can find The Beholder's Eye every other Friday on iTunes, SoundCloud, or anywhere podcasts are found. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe.